Before there was Shane and Shane, before Bethel or Hillsong, before David Crowder or Phil Wickham, before Jesus Culture or Chris Thomas, we didn't just sing hymns. Hymns, by the way, was the modernizing of Psalter worship. I'm not talking about hymns of the 3rd or 4th century that were later made into Gregorian chants in the 6th century. The hymns that we sing today actually started from the 16th century Protestant Reformation and were actually the most modern songs that, were, that existed. I mean, if they had radio back then, in the Billboard Top 10, five of them would be praise music. In America, there was some resistance to hymns because they were so modern. So, many churches stuck with Psalters, which were basically the songs set to music. Eventually, with Isaac Watts, the church modernized and started singing hymns. Isaac Watts was the David Crowder of the 1700s, but by the time his music was really famous, he was dead for 20 years. While England had more and more great hymns, America lagged behind for 100 years. Interestingly, the evolution of praise music actually followed the revolution of American music in the 1960s with the advance of the hippie culture. When hippie and street musicians converted to the gospel through the Jesus movement, it was the beginning of Christian music. So it wasn't long before praise music caught up. The first one on the scene was Maranatha. They were popular only in California until they released their first album in 1974. The songs were not revolutionary, but it was a start. Today you might hear it in children's ministry, songs like In 1983, Integrity Music got started with songs like songs were alright, but nothing that was a hit, and Maranatha kept racking it up. Yes, Maranatha wrote the old classic, We Still Sing. And I leave my voice to worship Christ in me is to live to die. And in 1986, they released As the Deer. At the same time, Integrity's Pete Sanchez wrote I Exalt Thee, and Don Moan wrote Give Thanks, and Kent Henry puts up He is Exalted, You Are My Hiding Place, I Worship You Almighty God. Those albums really put Integrity Hosanna on the map. Other hits from Integrity include Glorify Thy Name, And in 1988, my life swept the nation.
enter boldly in your presence. To enter boldly. On bended knees I come with a humble. But Maranatha comes back in 1989 with Lord, I lift your name on high. This was the song that every church overplayed every week. But now Maranatha had competition from Vineyard Music, launching their Touching the Father's Heart series with hits like In 1989, Brian Dorickson wrote Refiner's Fire. my heart. Let me be as as contemporary Christian music got better, the evolution of praise music took another leap in the 90s with music that was actually good enough for Christian radio. Maranatha entered 1990 with Praise 13. And Vineyard entered with Touching the Father's Heart 6, 7, and 8. Integrity added, this is the day. There is none like you. 1991, Maranatha released I Will Celebrate. Vineyard came out with his banner over me. With Touching the Father's Heart 12, there was no doubt that Vineyard was the new king with hits like Father of Life, Glory, Honor, and Power, Jesus Alone, and Psalm of Faith. It's not that they were losing their audience, well kind of, but church music wasn't evolving with the culture. So Maranatha kept their old Maranatha praise singers, but they formed a brand new Maranatha praise band, which had a more upbeat style, writing, and praiseifying hits like Awesome God. And then for some reason, Maranatha took a five-year break to find out who took over and how much praise music changed and who contributed. Watch part two of Evolution of Praise Music. I love the truth, I love the power of the name, but you know I